ten dollars on Temio. I love Temio. Honestly, my whole apartment is made of Temio, bitch. <laughs> like all the lights. Because we have to save money. Because you know we're balling on a budget. Singers aren't making <laughs> out here, y'all. <laughs> we're in LA. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the House of Royale. This is episode 47. Oh, my God. You guys, I have a world-renowned musician on the show today. So I just want everyone to go to the patreon.com slash House of Royale and give us $10,000 so that I can give Mandy Rose 5000 of exactly. it. Yeah, we're going to need that. Please, because you guys, we are doing this for y'all and it costs a lot of money. And we just we especially all the boys out there, all the men who like love watching our content, just like cash app us, Venmo us, whatever. Just send us that money and we will give you the show, the content, the songs of your life. Right. Yeah. It costs to look this pretty. OK, exactly. Like, we could use your assistance. <laughs> OK, we don't do this for free. And we're back. You guys, let me introduce our guest today. Not only is she effing gorgeous, <laughs> she can stand in the middle of a room and rap battle any rapper out here in LA. She is a writer, a songwriter, writing for some of the biggest groups, singers, artists out here in the music industry, okay? Her new album that she just released, like not me in the car jamming out to Mandy Rose on repeat, all of her songs. I've been listening to her music for like over a year, maybe almost two years now. Do yourself a favor, give your life that extra boost and energy that it needs and stream her music. We love her so much. Please welcome Mandy Rose. Hey, baby. What's up, Thorns? If you want to be part of the Rose Club, I call you my Thorns. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of my one of my fans came up with that. Yeah. I was wondering what the fandom was called. Yeah. So I was on TikTok Live one day, and someone was like, I'm born to Thorn. And I was like, yeah. That's so perfect. perfect. Oh, my God. Couldn't be I a Rose it. without my Thorns. So thank you for being here. And there are so many thorns in the music industry, but you are just this gorgeous rose that is like blooming through all of the darkness, honey. <laughs> it's a process. Let me tell you that. It's, it's so hard. It's so rough. Um, <sighs> let's I, first of all, before we get into like the tragedy of being a singer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's start from the beginning because I want people to really get to know you as a human and like where you come from. So let's get to the bottom of it, the origin story, where you come from, all of that. Let's get into it. So I was born in Texas and I moved to Virginia when I was four years old. Yeehaw! And honestly, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go all the way back and tell you my life story, but so Virginia. Yeehaw. Yeah. Virginia raised there since I was four. And uh, I started music by playing the piano, actually. Wow. Uh, yeah. So I started piano lessons when I was in first grade. And wow. I was, like, obsessed with it. Um, and I just did, I think I did that for, like, eight years. And then I was like, let's move forward. Let's start, like, writing things. I think I started writing when I was in middle school. Okay. And I was just, like, dropping little, like, ideas on, like, my Twitter when I first got, like, socials Amazing. and stuff. And, and I was just kind of, like, freeballing it. And it wasn't until I would say 2021 that I started releasing music independently. Okay, wait. Er, 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 rewind. Uh -oh. I'm doing too much. No, no, no. <laughs> you're not. I need you to do the most, please. I'm so bored. Like, I need people to come in and just be insane. Um, <laughs> but the rapping, like, who... Okay, when you were, like, 10 years old, who were you listening to? I need to know. Okay, so I was a big Nicki Minaj fan. Oh. Um, yeah, so my best friend um, back in the day in elementary school, her name was Jakira. Shout out to Jakira. She's probably going to watch this. I yes. love you. But um, she's the one that put me on to rap music in general. I remember we would be sitting on the bus, and she would ask me to, like, memorize, like, certain songs and verses, and I would just come on. I'd be like, yeah. Just met a boy, just met a boy, went. You know what I'm saying? Like, just going in. Oh, my God. And I didn't know. Like, I was kind of scared to be a rapper, like, officially, because I felt like I was going to be made fun of, you know? Like, people mm -hmm. people don't typically look at me and they're like, oh, she's going to rap. 
So it took me a lot to get out of my shell and be like, no, I'm actually good at this. Like I can do this. Yes. Yeah. But I always loved it. I always loved it. It's so crazy because as I sit here, I'm like, who are like the white girl rappers right yeah. now? It's mm. Iggy Azalea. Right, it is. And there's like, um, you know, Caitlyn. She's the one that signed to Russ. Do you remember that? She, uh -huh. she kind of blew up know, an open I, verse I've challenge. heard of Caitlyn, yeah. Yeah, so there's there's not a lot in the game right now. So that's kind of, I kind of got an, uh, a free lane for me to kind of slide in for you guys. Yes. So kind of nice. <laughs> Rap wise, because we're going to get into your vocals too. But like, if you could do a collab with a rapper, who would it be? So... <laughs> actually queen irby we were just talking about <gasps> queen irby oh my god she was a huge inspiration for me to drop out of college i was in college for a couple of years wow. and she started talking about how because you know she was initially carmen and she yep. was signed as carmen and then when she came independent she kind of started this rap vibe um and i was so inspired off of that and actually it was something that she had posted talking about pretty much the setup that you need to just start engineering yourself and yeah. start making your own stuff. And I literally just followed her blueprint. Like she was an icon to me when she came wow. out as Queen Herbie. So I would love to collaborate with her. <laughs> Same. I think we all love you, Queen Herbie. You're hey, just the shit. You. And also like shout out to your man, Nick. Like you guys are the best team. We all love you guys. She really is the blueprint. I know. Yeah. I know and I love her. And, and her content, everything, everything mm -hmm. about her. Yeah. I'm just like her energy, and I love the way that she built herself up independently. I yes. think that's so incredible. Exactly. Okay, so you're 10, you're listening to Nicki Minaj, you're rapping, you're like, oh shit, I'm good at this. <laughs> what yes. about the singing? Uh, yeah, so I definitely grew up like primarily on pop music. Uh -huh. I was always a big like Britney Spears fan. Um, who else? I mean, we all, I grew up on Hannah Montana. Okay. I mean, like Miley. I was a Disney channel queen. I yeah. loved watching Disney channel. So all of the like little pop moments on there were a huge inspiration for me. The Y2K pop era. It's like, I just, I love to pull from that. It's. What about Christina? Yeah. I mean, Christina, I, I am inspired by her, but I wouldn't say that my sound is similar. Mm -hmm. I would say, but I, yeah, I would say that like. I love her style. Yeah. I think she's incredible mm -hmm. and she's a great performer. I just want to give her her flowers because everyone always mentions Britney and like, we love you, Britney. I'm obsessed with you forever, but like, <sighs> right. Ex she's being Tina. overshadowed. Yeah. She, you know, she was, a, yeah, I think she was a little overshadowed and she does deserve, cause she's got some vocals on her. I mean, you know, who else can sing their ass off? Who is a big fan of you <laughs> who? is Todrick that part God, yes he's so good i, I am obsessed with him and when just, when i just, when he saw one of my songs and he duetted it i immediately like fucking like threw up i was like i can't believe this is real right <laughs> i was like do i dm him like what do i say yeah but no he's amazing literally love him you know what I, todrick i met you one time at some recording studio and we were like doing a photo shoot together immediately it was hysterical but his voice i just remember like hearing playback from whatever he was recording and I'm like, God damn, he can really sing his ass off. He can sing and he can rap and and I dance and dance. Absolutely. And he could pull up. He could pull off a full face and he can pull off a, a bare face. And I right. love that about yeah. him. He's yes. so, he, I just love it. I know. And I really hope that we can meet one day, babe. Yeah. No, I'm let's manifest that. Todrick, can you just <laughs> like do a collab with Mandy Rose and Queen Herbie and Taylor Swift? Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think that we would really kill it. Yeah, I think the internet is waiting, honestly. Yeah. So, And also, Todrick, like, you should do a writing session with Mandy Rose for, um, are we allowed to say? Oh, yeah. Blackpink. <gasps> you guys should do a writing session together for Blackpink. Yeah, so, like, I, I will say this. So, like, I'm pretty new into the K-pop game. I've only mm -hmm. been out there a couple times doing some songwriting sessions. So I don't know like how much say I have in like controlling the session, but I'm putting my name out there and you just never know. You just yeah. never know. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. There's a female producer um, who was working very closely with them. Um, what's her name? I'd like, be like that. Shout out to like another female engineer we love you we yeah, need yeah, more yeah. we need more female engineers we in really the world. do yeah when i went to engineering school i want to say that there was 
Um, so it was like a group of like 25 people. And I think there were like three girls in the, um, whole class. And that was the most girls they've ever had at that school in one time. Yeah. Jesus. That's crazy. Right. What school did you go to? So I went to Blackbird Academy. It was like a six month trade school. Um, cause Lord knows I couldn't get through four years of like an actual school. Um, but it was really nice. It was, it, it was like half of the time we were in class learning pro tools and the commands and acoustics. And then the other half of the time we were like working with real bands, like mm-hmm. actually recording them. So it was nice to get like a real experience hands on as an engineer. Let's nerd out. Are you more of a logic person or a pro tools girly? So pro tools is like, it's just the the basic like everybody always goes to pro tools so i think it's important for vocals for vocals i'm actually an fl studio girl for beats okay <laughs> some people like some people are like really and i'm like yeah but i made rhs on fl studio and that's for, a good- for you guys who don't know what that is it's it's fruity loops yeah it is it is fruity loops i know it, it people gets a have bad no rap. idea what you're talking about it gets a bad rap but you know what i've made some iconic beats on there so don't sleep on it i mean i can second that because her beats are fucking fire i don't i don't even think it's about the doll that you use i think it's about the brain that is on the doll so it's like it's like you can put sounds together and make something incredible happen on garage band if you wanted to really so bars yeah that part (laughs) don't forget it i said what i said (laughs) okay so let's go back to the beginning once again um because i want to really like get an idea of like your upbringing and like how it all started to evolve yeah like let's do freshman year of high school what was happening oh my god (laughs) (laughs) you're like i'm gonna need therapy i was becoming a menace to society at that time (laughs) um i would say high school was like definitely the time where i kind of like lost myself musically um like I was still I was in show choir and I was I always kind of incorporated music in my life but like I was just lost you know I started doing like drugs and stuff (laughs) which is fine um you know we all go through our phases yes Uh, of course and you know I was going back and forth because my parents got a divorce when I was pretty young so I was like Mm. going back and forth between houses my mom had gotten remarried when I was in high school and so then I I moved high schools So I think there was just like a lot of soul searching going on in that period of my life. And it was kind of like stepping away from the music scene and stepping into like, who am I as a person, you know, figuring it out. Um, So high school was a blur. Let's just say that. (laughs) I mean, I feel you, girl. I I went to so many different schools and... For a minute there, it was so great because my mom was like the studio, like the dance studio owner. And it was so amazing until she sold the studios. And I had no idea. Like, I thought I was going to be a tour dancer, you know, and that's kind of the moment when I was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to be the star. I'm going to be the singer. And then they can all dance behind me, bitch. 100%. Um, So, you know, maybe I'm grateful for the adversity in a way. But then I'm like. If I make it, I'll be even more grateful. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Like, I always tell myself, like, rejection is God's protection. I remember when I was, like, 15, I actually was going to audition for America's Got Talent. Mm. I had already, like, gotten, put my submission in. I went to D.C. to audition. I get there. I put my little outfit on. Like, I'm ready to go. And I realize when I get to the place that I didn't bring my ID yeah so I have a (sighs) mental breakdown because I thought that I was about to have my big break I was like this is it for me but I'll say now knowing what I know now I wouldn't have been able to handle fame or just the industry in general at that time and so that just goes to show it's like even when you think you're ready I think that when you are truly ready it'll come to you I cannot agree with you more, especially this year is so chaotic with all of the documentaries coming out. And it's just like everything you tweet, everything you text, all the photos like and for women, it's so scary because we are such like loving, vulnerable people. And it's like the relationships that we're in like men have photos of us men have videos of us Mm. like when you become a star it's all out in the open and like that's always been a fear of mine is like if I do really make it on a big scale what's gonna happen like it really is something to think about yeah yeah and you know like I 
I, I talk about this, like when you're, when you're put in a spotlight and you want that position, you're going to be dissected and picked mm-hmm. apart by everybody. And that's something that like you have to be ready for. And it's like, first you have to face yourself. And until like you have fully accepted every part of you, mm-hmm. every part of your journey, flaws and all, like you're not going to be ready for the, for the world. Yeah. Um, the world, because like people are relentless, especially Insane. on the internet. So you have to like, and so I'm actually very grateful. Like growing up, I went through some like, I was that girl that like there were rumors about me. I got bullied here and mm-hmm. there. And, you know, at the time, I'm like, why is this happening to me? And now I see I'm like, oh, that was just like a little taste of what I'm going to experience as I dive into this industry. So I'm I'm grateful for every lesson that I've learned. And I'm way more aware of the the way the Internet is going to like view you as you come up and as you expose yourself. So Mm -hmm. it's going to happen. We'll come back to that (laughs) after high school. What's the deal? What what was the transition like for you? You're like 18 and you're like. I want to be a superstar or what was it? Yeah. Well, I definitely always knew that I wanted to do something in music. Um, I don't think that I fully knew how to do that yet. And Mm -hmm. I still had people pleasing tendencies. Like I wanted to make my parents proud and I just wanted to do like what everybody told me was right. So I went right into college and I went to this private college in Virginia called Randolph Macon and I um, wow. got a scholarship there for show choir. And that was like the one thing that was motivating me to go there because I was like, okay, I still get to sing and dance and perform. Um, but my freshman year was when COVID hit. And <gasps> so we all had to evacuate campus. Oh my God. And the shows got canceled, rehearsals got canceled. And I was like, what am I doing here? And that's why, like, actually, I think that's like the main reason I dropped out was I think if COVID didn't happen, I, I may have like saw it through which I'm so grateful that I dropped out because I wouldn't be here right now. So (laughs) I mean, lockdown changed everyone's lives for real. I was relieved. I was like, Oh, I can like not for a second. Thank God. (laughs) You're like, Oh my God, I got a break. (laughs) Yes. Like I was so ready for a break. And also during lockdown is when I got super obsessed with podcasts and I saw all these women And it's so funny because, like, as a kid, there were a lot of women that I identified with. But when I moved to L.A., it was almost like it it was already past the point of, like, the Britney Christina era. Mm -hmm. And I and I felt like nobody come for me. This is just like my personal experience, you know, like (laughs) I was feeling the hate already because it was like, but we already did your thing. Right. It's already been done. So, like, you're coming to L.A. to do what's already been done. Yeah. And it was devastating to go through that. And I, like, tried to dye my hair black to be more, like, relatable and, like, more, like, eth- ethnically ambiguous and shit. I'm going to get so canceled for this. No, but it's real, though. There's a point in me saying all of this. Um, it's just, you know, you have to figure out, like, mm-hmm. how to build a fan base is, like, so... It's so difficult. And I feel like during lockdown, I finally started to see girls that I could identify with once again Mm. that were like in front of the camera, like Whitney Cummings and the comedian, um, Chelsea Handler, Alex Cooper, Sophia F, Violet Benson. Like, and I'm like, wait a minute. They're like saying all the shit that I wish I could say that I thought I was like, I would never be able to talk about publicly. Right. And that is what like planted the seed for the idea to start this show. Because when I interview girls like you, singer, like female singers in general, you guys, like no matter what you look like, it's, it's these stories that we like hold inside that we're not allowed to talk about. Like mm. all the shit that we go through. Cause it's like, you can be super talented and be a superstar, but like, the general public doesn't realize the walls that we hit and the reasons why we're not like catapulting immediately. It's insane. Actually, I was like watching a podcast or an interview that Taylor Swift was doing and I put it on my story recently and people were talking or she was talking about so many people think you get discovered, you get a deal, you guys make the records and then it's just like it just goes up from there. And there's just so much more to developing yourself as an artist and becoming somebody because everybody comes out to L.A. with a dream. Nobody comes out here (laughs) like I'm just going to be a regular fucking person. Like nobody does that. And 
you know, like you, like you were saying, going back to like, you know, the Britney thing already happened and like trying to be something new, like everybody is looking for something new, you know, mm -hmm. everybody is looking for that thing that stands out and we're in a city full of people who are trying to stand out. So mm -hmm. it's like some, sometimes like it, it's, a, it does feel like a struggle, right? Because it's like, it's there's so much talent and it's like how do you how do you stand out amongst all of that and that's also a big reason I'm grateful that I started rapping because I think that that does help me um stand out a little bit but that's like totally aside from the point like the point is that there's so much more behind the scenes than what people see mm -hmm. and like people from my hometown now like they see like I made it out I made it to LA I've been here for a year and they like think that I'm just like great and everything is just perfect and I'm so grateful to be where I am, but I will say that there's so much that people don't see right. that you have to do, Yeah, you know, to, to keep going. Absolutely. Yeah. So. It's like you build a foundation and you think that it's built and you're like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> and then it's like, no, no, no. That was step one. It's like, it's nuts. It, it's, it, it's so much work, you guys. And then it's so much work mm -hmm. like every day after that. And I think like, for me, what I'm going through right now is I want to be surrounded by people that I love. And I think for years, it's just been people that I feel were like dark and weird and didn't really love me and didn't really like take care of me as an artist. Mm. And I think in order for artists to thrive, like this is just a message to all the a &Rs and all the label people and all the management out there. I think the more you make your artists feel loved and adored and respected, the more that we will work hard for you guys. Cause I think mm. they really treat us with like a coldness in a way. Like they mm. just expect us to be these savages. And it's like, mm. especially for all the girlies out there, like we're crying most of the time. <laughs> like so true. we're so hormonal and tired. And I just, my advice to like anyone running careers out there is like really like take the time to give us a hug ask if we're okay check in on us as artists I think artists need more of that yeah I think it's like it takes a lot of fuel and support to like show up every day as a superstar like to wake up every morning and be like I'm gonna show my face on the internet I'm gonna look my best I'm gonna like have this energy like no no real human being feels like that every day. And so if you're going to like, especially at the beginning of your, of your grind and building yourself, like the, the amount of work that has to be put in, like, I think it's so important to have a strong support system because yeah. like, it's so easy to like lose yourself in it and like just want to fall apart and just want to stop. But you have to be like so obsessed with what you do to keep going. That's, that's mm -hmm. my point is like, it is not easy to show up like that every day. So shout out to the people who are, because I know that it's because you're absolutely obsessed and you won't, you won't stop at anything to make it happen. Okay. But also I'm obsessed with building a community, which yes. is also why I started this show. And so I do want to do some shout outs to Scarlett, Dream Girl producer bag, Blair Woods, Katie Welch, Leah, all the girls that have come out to do the podcast. I'm going to just like tag all of you guys in this because I want more girls to be friends with each other and I want more girls to be working together because the men are out here killing the game and they've been doing it for thousands of years and I'm really tired of it. So ladies, like the only way we're going to win is if we start building each other up and working together. And I'm out here doing the damn thing. Like I keep asking the universe every day, please give me an all female production team squad, the whole thing, like a network. Oh my God. It's like the, it's like the brat pack. We have to. No, that's so cute. And you know what? Like I cannot wait to be in touch with you guys. You're yeah. one of like the, I think you're one of the first girls out here to reach out to me on your own and be like I would love to collaborate I'd love to put you on to the people that I know that love you and I mean I have a couple of like tight-knit people a lot of them I met through like the male producers that I work with and whatnot so it's really nice to just have a one-on-one -on -one interaction have like a girl reach out to me herself and and ask to do this because I think that a lot of times like women out here are viewing each other as competition. And I hate that because I feel like if we came together and boosted each other up rather than pinning us against each other, we could be so much stronger and we wouldn't necessarily need 
anybody else. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Also, TK, Tori K, TK. Okay. Um, TK and Blair immediately were introducing you to them. Aww. Um, I, it's so, you guys are so lucky that I'm so fucking exhausted because I don't give a shit anymore. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't, I'm too tired to feel the competition. Like, I want you to get a hit record with Blackpink. I want you to have a hit record with Todrick. Like, please. Yeah. Like, you know, like, give me some inspiration. I want to see one of our girls make it, you know? Yeah. It helps the whole squad. And I feel like if you come in with that energy, like, people are going to spread the word positively about you like and i think that's like the most important thing is like if you do bring that encouragement into an artist's life especially somebody who like i i'm not out here with a million followers guys like i have a few records out i don't have a lot of stuff released like so it's nice to hear that from somebody who has been at it for longer and it's like you know what like I I just want to see I just want to see you thrive. I'm like, yes. Like this is the energy that I needed in my life. So. Yeah. But like women deserve justice. Like I I'm so like fucking angry. <laughs> <laughs> Ting. Like I'm just yeah. I want to fucking murder people. Um Sparkle. No, but like I just want I do. I want justice. I want justice and I want it to feel fun. I want music to be fun. I don't want to think recording studio equals me crying like mm. i don't i don't want to think like that ever again i just yeah. want to be like oh my god i feel like i just popped a molly and everything feels euphoric <laughs> and amazing and i'm just like happy to be here like that's how it should fucking feel yeah. and that's how grammys get won and that's how hit records get made is when you're that energy is just like buzzing in your body and then the universe is like, oh, okay, motherfucker, I guess you're ready now. Yeah. The universe feels that energy. Yeah, and I'm, like, thinking back to my journey of becoming Mandy Rose, like, I always knew that I had something in me. I knew this was what I was supposed to do for a living. Um, and I was always so passionate about it. And every time I was creating, it came from a place of just joy exactly. and love. And I think that where the disconnect sometimes happens is when you suddenly feel like you have something to prove or you need, or you're trying to get something out of it. When it suddenly becomes like, I need this to work to survive, it suddenly like strips the fun away from it. And so I think it's just so important to like, remember why you started in the first place, because I didn't start making music when I was like eight years old because of money or because of fame i didn't even know what those things were really like i just did it because i loved it you exactly. know because it was like inside of me and it made me feel like i had a purpose and i have to like remind myself of that sometimes when i get caught up in the like i just want something to go viral i just want to be recognized i just want my flowers like i can't get lost in the bullshit of it you know i have to remember what I'm doing this for, you know? <laughs> right. It's, it's hard though. It is hard. It is hard. I, I also get caught up in aesthetic. I'm like, oh, yeah. I was literally just on the phone before you got here with Ricky Rebel. And I was like, I, I need the venue to be dark and I need like a light show, like, or else I just don't want to do it. It's mm. like, I want like a professional production or else I just don't want to do it. And it's like, well, bitch, Sometimes you're going to get hired to perform in like a really bright lit, awkward as fuck, weird venue. And you just have to roll with the punches. It's like as a dancer, I get really caught up in like, how does it look? Mm. How, what is it like? Are we going to compare it to Dua Lipa right now? Because you can't do that because you're you're not on a Dua Lipa motherfucking budget. Right. <laughs> but, but I don't know. How do you feel about I think like aesthetic has always been an important part of my world period. Like when I was younger, it was just like very important to me that I felt pretty. I always wore like bows in my hair. You can see like I always kept like little <laughs> gems on. And like I was always like about unicorns and butterflies and like all that stuff, right? So I would say that your sensory world is important. I mm. wouldn't disregard that and say like that it doesn't matter. Um, but I do think it's something to like take with a grain of salt when you're, when you're building yourself, because yeah, like take every opportunity possible, even if it's in a dingy hole in the wall type of place. Like if you're asking me to perform, I'm performing, like, yeah. you know, but I think that when it comes down to your brand and putting yourself out there on your own socials, like there's nothing wrong with being picky about 
how you want to present yourself and how you want to put it together. Okay, so that being said, if you had the budget for a world <laughs> tour, d- do you know what your show would look like or like the concept or like the colors or oh my god i don't know what would it feel like what would the mandy rose world tour be like i would love i mean in an ideal world um lots of color lots Mm -hmm. of glitter you know like maybe even every once in a while i throw on like a pink wig like i just love over the top everything i would love to have like background dancers with like a bunch of background dancers and I like preferably drag queens. I'd love to have drag queens Ooh, in my yeah. show. I feel like that's very on brand for me. Maybe, so. maybe like a Candyland. Yes. Yes. Candyland. And that's so interesting. Cause like my mom always like said, I have a tattoo. This is Mandy land. You probably can't see it, but oh, perfect. Um, my mom always told me like, cause I was always up in space like la 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 and she always called it mandy land you perfect know? and so that was like that that was a big part of my upbringing and so i did see that being like aesthetically a part of my i want to get back into manifesting collaborations because i re- like i feel like i'm a witch and i feel like sometimes <laughs> these things do happen i've had a few guests on the show and like my friend johnny rice he was like i want to meet janet jackson i want to collab with paula abdul I want to get back together with the uh, Kiss Boys, and all three happened. Mm. Right, so let's just start naming names. Um, Doja Cat, <laughs> if you're on here, okay. I'm obsessed with you. I like the second that she started incorporating singing and rapping together, I was like, Pfft. like that's 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 it. I love that. So. Doja Cat, huge inspiration to me. Like Ariana Grande, I mean, I'm dead. <laughs> Break up with your girlfriend. Okay, wait, let's think about this. Billie Eilish. Oh, Billie Eilish is incredible. Sl- Slater is really cool. <gasps> Slater. Oh my God, I'm obsessed with her um, recent drop, I'm- Starfucker. Oh, yes. Have you heard it? Yes. Yeah, so that's a huge inspiration for you. know Snow Wife? Yeah, so like we're mutuals. Like, we oh, follow- nice. And I like I followed her. I think I first followed her when she was like 50,000 followers. And uh-huh. I watched like this is before she uh, teased American Horror Show. Mm-hmm. So like it was so incredible to watch her like um, come up and like where she's at now Look, can i just like comment on that yeah like okay i love you because i'm a dancer and you're like the best dancer you're such an amazing dancer and like the production the songs are amazing maybe like let's throw some yeah. like easter eggs in there to make people try to guess a little bit more that's all i'm saying as a writer i feel like it was a little bit it's like right to the point right i feel that and i you know what like i I am not gonna lie. I adore her. I adore her debut EP. So I like. I yeah. listen to it all the time. For like sure. I just think like sonically, it sounds like incredible. Exactly. Like it. It is incredible. And if and if she ever needs some clever bars, like I. Right. I've got some you know good ones up here. Exactly. So that's all I'm saying. I would love to see Snow Wife blow the fuck up. All right. <laughs> you and Snow Wife are gonna do a great song together. We can't wait. <laughs> oh my God! Have you heard of Aston? She's the one that did, she's like an up and coming. Like she's not like um, she's an up and coming artist. She's definitely ahead of the game than me. She's got like 1.5 mil on Spotify. Okay. I mean not Spotify on um, TikTok. I think she's got like 500 or 600 k listeners on Spotify. Okay. And me and her have actually been chatting Amazing. about doing a session together. So I'm really excited that like there are finally some beautiful female good. artists that are finding me. Yes. It's so good. It's so good. Shout out, Aston. We love you. Love you, babe. I'm going to listen to your music right after this. Shows. I, I really, for you, I want to manifest building a fan base out here in L.A. Mm. and having these people come to your shows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, like, performing is, like, my, my number one love. Like, I always said before anything, like, I want to perform. So, for a live show, how many songs do you usually do? So, um, literally, I've done one live show, and I did eight songs wow yeah yeah i'm i'm down with the get down i will put on a show for you okay damn yeah i mean like a lot of my songs are fairly short like a lot of, like all of them are less than three minutes so it's right. like they're all very fast paced so they roll through really fast but i've got so much in the vault as well i could literally put on a show for a whole hour if it came down to it yeah maybe you know ricky and i were talking about this earlier we were thinking in order to sell tickets selling tickets is really hard mm we were thinking of putting together a live stream show and like you sell you sell it for ten dollars a ticket or something because he has a fan base he used to be signed to michael jackson he has a little fan base going on all the little gay boys and they will pay to see ricky sing so he was like why don't we just put on a live stream show like 
once or twice a month and build a fan base and then go out and do a venue and sell it like as you build. Right. What do you think about that? That's so smart because I feel like my fan base as well as like so many other people like they're all over the world and they can't necessarily go fly out to wherever you are and go to your show. So if you start by building something like online that's accessible to everybody and then you kind of build up this hype, it's probably going to be like way more successful when you bring it into the physical world. I love that idea. I'm about it. You guys can hit me up when you start this because I'm I want to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, sound off in the comments if you guys want to see Mandy Rose live streaming live, and if you would buy a ticket. I think you should do it like next week. Yeah, I mean, not to like toot my own horn, but I am like quite the performer. I, like when I'm on a stage, I just like I swear my energy just becomes like ten times like more intense because I'm just like it's it's something about the crowd. It's something about being exactly. in front of people face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Love I it. know. Same. I, love, I love a crowd. What do you want the people to know about the album that's out right now? Well, I would love for you guys to know that a lot of the songs on there were co-productions. Um, I produced a lot of those songs with people on my team. Shout out to Mob because he was like the main one that sat down and made those records with me. Um, and Pretty much like when I was making those songs, I just wanted it to be an authentic reflection of me, where I'm at right now in my life, how I got to where I'm at. I was like, you know what? If I'm going to introduce something, my first debut EP to the world, like let it let me show all my colors. So I feel like each song has its own little taste of like a side of me. And that's why I called it Hurricane Mandy, because it just like it just shows like the clusterfuck of like all of my personalities put into like one little. It's so good. Yeah. So go stream Hurricane Mandy if you haven't. Why already. is Criminal Attraction my favorite song? I, it's my oh, favorite. Oh, my God. I can talk about Criminal Attraction for days um, because it I think that that song means the most to me out of wow. everyone on the EP and honestly maybe it means the most to me out of every song I've ever written because the first verse of it where I said dance with the devil fell in love yeah all my friends would say and I do too much I wrote that when I was 15 and I was going through an eating disorder oh wow um, yeah and I was talking about it's like sometimes the we can just call them demons in your mind, right? Like when you let them control you and they get stronger, it's almost like you feel like they're your friend, right? And so that's kind of what that first verse was about is like becoming friends with- The man the, in red? Yeah, the man in red. And the man in red was just like a a figure in my head that was like pretty much leading me down like a, like a really dark path. And I was like losing my friends at that time. And they were telling me they're worried about me. And I was like, mm -hmm. I just like, I resorted to writing because I didn't know how else to express myself. And I picked back up on that song, um, literally like years later. Like I, I finished that song finally when I, signed to Tommy and I started working on my own productions again. I was like, you know what? That was a good idea. I should, I should pick that back up. And I wow. think as, yeah, as I got older, it, it kind of meant other things to me. Cause like, you know, criminal attraction and the message behind it, it can mean different things to different people. It could be about relationships. You're it like be about every guy we've ever fucked. Yes. Every <laughs> fucking man that's ever touched me. Um, literally like, addiction and you know coming out here LA and, yeah LA <laughs> falling into far, falling into the party life learning boundaries growing like as you get older and you start living on your own like all of like you're going to fall into temptations and you're going to fall into certain cycles that you're gonna have to pull yourself out of and like that's what that song is about it's like it's like spiraling and like being aware of of the trauma that I'm experiencing, but not pulling myself out of it because like part of me loved it. Like I was like, it gave you, it gives you a high, you know, the same reason why people don't quit addictions. It's like, it gives you a fix for a period of time. But then when you fall out of it, it's like devastating. And that's what the breakdown is at the very end where it's like, boom, I still haven't learned my lesson. It's like when you come down from all of it and you're looking back at what you've done and you're like, what the fuck? Yep. <laughs> And yeah, actually one of my friends um, that I recently uh, got to know, she told me that that song um, is one of her favorites too. And yeah. she resonates that she's like, she's a, she was a foster kid mm. and 
Mm. Growing up, I don't think I think that she found home in like the wrong people sometimes in the wrong mm-hmm. places. And her expressing that to me when she um, heard the lyrics "Fallen Angel" so mistaken, she was talking about how she just felt like she was doing the best she could, and people would pick her apart for like her decisions and the people that she chose to be around mm-hmm. and stuff. And I think it's beautiful to hear what it means to different people depending on their stories because everybody can relate to some extent, you know, whatever yeah. you've been through. But also for me, it was the top line. I'm like, this is so hot. Yeah. Like melodically, I'm like, oh my God, the production, it's so sick. Yeah. It's so cool. Yo, thank you. I feel like that one is so underrated. Like people need to listen to that one more because I like yeah, it's got this like creepy vibe, but it's also like super it's super fun to listen to. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's very Britney. Um it is. and ring. Yes. Put a ring on it. Like, but do you actually want to get married, please? <laughs> <laughs> this is so some- do this is something that i i think it's gonna take a very special person to hold me down that's all i'm gonna say i haven't met somebody that i would marry yet thank god i'm gonna say that i mean like you know what you might be out there and i might have met you but you're not the version of yourself that i would marry yet like to me the point of me saying i'm gonna need a ring if you want a ring ring was really essentially like it doesn't mean like literally put a ring on it. It means more so like I need you to be absolutely obsessed with me and absolutely committed to me. Like I'm not wasting my time talking. Like what do you want from me? That's pretty much what it's about. Like I'm busy. I'm building my empire right now. I don't have time for fuck boys. I don't have time for hookups. I don't have time for like silly games. That's kind of what it's about. It's like you're either in it or you're not. And if you're not sure, like don't call me. I mean, hell yes, but also... <laughs> I just have to say, I had like, how old is he? 20, a 20 year old over here the other night. Oh, true. <laughs> and it was lovely. You know what I mean? Like, let them, like, if you guys want to fuck me, it's cool. Cause like, I'm really over it. <laughs> I just dated a celebrity and he was like, you know, way older. And I was like, see, this is me being responsible. This is a healthy, loving relationship. And then I realized, oh, my God, he's a boomer. And it was so toxic and scary. And he was, like, racist and sexist. And, like, the truth ended up coming (gasps) out. And he's a celebrity, which is, like, just a terrible idea in general. Oh, my God. Because, you know, I'm sorry to all the celebrities out there, but you guys are kind of, like, Looney Tunes. (laughs) And so I'm like, you know what? Fuck this shit. Like, just, you know come to mommy i'll be mommy you be my son come over fuck me it's cool i'm just like right now that's where i'm at in my life but i i do agree with you i think all the women out there have self-respect and don't let him touch your pussy girl period i just think it's like a matter of like (laughs) no judgment like all i have to say is like whatever you're looking for like go get it like whatever at the time whatever you want but like i'm 23 I'm like, I'm young. And I think part of me still sometimes like romanticizes love. Yeah. And like the idea of like finding your person and whatnot. And who knows, maybe that's going to go down the drain. Let's just see what happens. Right. No, but, you no, can do it. No, it's but, there. but like in reality, like, I guess the whole point of that song was just like having a standard for yourself and not settling. Yeah. Because I just think that like so many women feel obligated to settle now if they want to like find a partner and like have a family and things like that and like i'm just not about it like i'm really just not no like to riff off of that what i i'm finally in a place where i can fuck and be like peace whereas Mm. like when i was your age it was like if i had sex with someone i was gonna fall in love with them Mm -hmm. or like really get hurt yeah because like i'm the shit why would you not like hold this down exactly whereas now i'm like get the fuck out of my apartment. No, so real. <laughs> and you know, like I've been doing a lot of like, cause I've like cut some bitches off recently. Let's just say that. Um, and I've been doing, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of self reflection and I'm like, like trying to figure out like, did I even want you or did I just want you to want me? For sure. Like you, it's all ego. What is going on? Right. And I think it's like right now, I mean, like my self love, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to attract what I'm looking for until I feel fulfilled within myself. And so that's why I'm like definitely standing strong in that. Like I'm gonna need a ring if you want a ring ring. Cause like I'm committed to myself right now. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. If but also com- like if you have a crush on him, just get to know him and then you'll be over it. You're <laughs> like- so right. Literally just like 
<laughs> like ask them their opinion of anything right. and you're going to be fine. <laughs> no, like I've actually been on some dates recently. Like it's not like I've totally closed myself off. Like I haven't been like hooking up with anybody, but I've, mm. you know, like I'm still exploring the world and you're so right. Like the ick is real. It's real. But I mean, <laughs> look, I, I believe in love too. And I, I still am like, okay, the universe wants me to tell it exactly what I want. Mm. Like I know what I want in a partner yeah it's just like so far it doesn't exist but like i have faith <laughs> but my standards are like you know i want to be a star so if you can't hop on board and help me fucking take off like if you can't be the man that's like baby you are the shit and i'm here for all of it exactly then like i can't it's not gonna work yeah and men have especially successful men who are good looking they fucking hate it when we're the star mm -hmm. they can't fucking stand it yeah, I so. like to say it's like when you're doing what we're doing out here, like they're either with it or they're against it. They're either going to support everything that you're doing and be a part of like your your upbringing or they're going to try to keep you down because they're like, I don't like I want this. I want her to myself. I don't need the world having this sort of like access to her or having this sort of like attention on her. And that's why it's like, that's why I say it's going to take a very special and secure person to be with me because I have big plans and you have to be on board, honey. Like, yeah, that's really what it comes down I to. I mean, and I have all the empathy in the world to the boys because I know it is difficult for you guys. I mean, you guys want to be loved and you guys want to be the alpha and like be the man too. And it's just like really fucking hard to have, a healthy dynamic like a healthy duality between a man and a woman like mm. with the power roles you know it, it's difficult really and then I ask myself do I just want a simp mm. but then I'm like no because like I want it all like I want you to be the alpha that like takes control and is in charge but then I also want you to be the simp that's like tell me what to do <laughs> yeah like I need you to be like busy enough that like I'm gonna miss you like if I don't like have some sp like if you're suffocating <laughs> me and you're like down breathing down my neck every second like I'm going to get sick of you right so that's why I said like you don't got the time of day to constantly be calling I need you to be a like a busy man yeah but then when you do make the time for me I need you to be like obsessed with me cooking me meals or giving me massages like i don't know like is that too much to ask for i don't think so yeah <laughs> like dating in la wow that's a whole what about women have you ever hooked up with a girl <laughs> my first hookup was a girl oh wow I, like i knew that i liked girls before i knew i liked guys for wow sure. oh yeah oh my girl. god i'm very much i'm very much you know what i'm saying there's a reason i don't have nails on oh my you know god <laughs> Yeah, so I actually do like shout out to my girls if you're watching this. I love you. Yes, same, 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 same. Um Yeah, she's a fruity patootie. Right? Oh my god, that's what I love about Gen Z though, is like not to put this guy on blast, um, but he was like saying that he's like very fruity and like open with boys too. And I was like, that's hot. Like I, I love a fruity man right i love a fruity man you know what's so like i need you to be like borderline like i'm questioning you yeah <laughs> like, i don't know what it is like there's just something about it yeah it just makes me feel like i can be liberated in my sexuality exactly. because you're comfortable you're so comfortable in yourself that you can say that to me and i know it takes more guts for a man because there's more shame around being gay as a man in society than there is for women because like being gay as a woman is sexualized and yeah. being gay as a man, like other men, a lot of other men will judge you for that. And so right. I think there's like a stigma. So I think it's like so amazing when a guy feels comfortable enough to admit that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so late in life and all these firsts for me, I know <laughs> like, and the way I feel about it too. Cause I feel like when I first moved to LA, I feel like every guy I fucked is probably secretly gay. <laughs> but like you, you know back in the day if a guy was like telling me that they might be bi that would like freak me the fuck out because then i'm like wait do you even really like girls but like now it's so much more normalized for people to be fluid that it's like you don't have to worry about it being a full lie it means it just means what it means like yeah. they're attracted to both and like hearing him be like yeah like i sucked a dick or whatever and i'm yeah. like i'm actually happy about this I right now like you. i'm not upset <laughs> Have you ever pegged somebody? I <laughs> just curious. Yes. 
No fucking way. One was a music producer. <laughs> the T. Oh my God. <laughs> and the other one was an Asian basketball player. <laughs> It's always the ones that you don't expect. <laughs> Moral of the story, if you're curious, <laughs> girls may be more open than you realize. That's really the point. That's yes. all I'm saying. Oh, my God. TK has a song called Peg. P-E-G. Yeah. You, know what I, you know what I thought about? I was like, what if I made a song called Pegasus? But it's like <gasps> Peg A-C-I-S, like Pegasus. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like what Pegasus. Girls, stop giving your ideas away. Okay. We're not going to work. That okay. is so good. Oh, I'm doing it. Pegasus. Like, that's the type of thing you're talking about, like, make it clever. Right? <gasps> Wait, but Sam Smith, can you? <gasps> Sam Smith, I have an idea for you. DM me immediately. And Madonna. Madonna. Because like, I feel they like just Lady Gaga vulgar. would do something like that, too. Uh, yes, and Gaga. But they just did the song Bulger together, and it was so hot. Have you heard it? Wait, I haven't heard it yet. I'm going <gasps> to listen to it in the car on my way back. I'm and, sorry. like, I have an in with Madonna because my <gasps> two... Friends, Matt, Katie, and Valerie Young are running her tour right now. Oh my God. Guys, I have ideas. We need to sit down and have a meeting because this is but good. Seriously, you know what? I'm going to introduce Valerie Young and Jason Young. I'm going to introduce Mandy Rose to y'all, and you guys are going to just serve her on a silver platter to Madonna. Okay, please. Like, <laughs> no, literally. She can do whatever she wants to me. Like, <laughs> I, I will thank her. She can literally <laughs> run me over with her car. I'm like, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Oh no, I'm serious. So serious. And Matt Katie, we're putting you in the studio with Mandy Rose, too. Oh, my God. This is so good. Matt's big time. He's choreographing for all the fucking big artists, girl. Oh, my God. I'm going to hook you this up. This is good. Yeah. I love this. So good. <clears throat> okay. So let's. It's been like over an hour. I let's, know. Let's do a manifestation. I want you to manifest exactly what the fuck you want for 2024. And then we're going to pull a tarot card from the Cardsy B deck. Let me sit on this for a second. Um, <laughs> so really like what I see for myself, that is like my biggest goal manifesting is like, I want to be on a tour. I want to, I want to be opening for, oh, who do I want to be opening for? I want to be opening for a big artist. Like I want to be opening for like Doja Cat. Or you're, like you know what you're going to do? Make a vision board. Yeah. With the 10 girls that you want to open for. Yeah. Because I'm not letting you open for a boy. Because I because I will <laughs> say, like, it's going to be it's going to be a woman. But I like at this point, like, I don't even necessarily feel like my own tour is like the goal for this year, because if I can piggyback off of an artist yeah. who I think has a similar audience as to who would like me and I go on their tour, that's like that'll catapult you right up. Right. Like in a way. So. That's a big goal of mine. Being on tour, meeting new people, collaborating with amazing artists, producers, female songwriters, all yeah. of those, all of those people, and just expanding my horizons out here in Los Angeles and just like building a building a dope ass empire. Hell yeah. That's really the goal. That's all I care about. <laughs> exactly. You guys, yeah. let's make vision boards. Like seriously, because I think every artist should just be able to list off like who would I open for? One, mm. two, three, four, five. Like our top artists that we would open for. Yeah, it's it's it does take time to think about. Yeah, it's, it's something like I'm trying to be so intentional with who I'm saying because, you know, words are spells. Everything that you say is is very real, mm -hmm. um, and. At the end of the day, I just want to make sure that I'm putting myself in an audience of people who are going to like really eat up what I'm serving because mm -hmm. like I've, I've been cooking in the kitchen. So Hell I got yeah. a lot. I've got a lot to show y'all at this point. And I'm just ready to be like doing shows in a different city every night. Like that's all I care about. I mean, maybe it is a male rapper though. Maybe like or like. I don't know, like maybe like I could see it being like a like a gay artist. Yes. For sure. Definitely. <laughs> like, I don't know. Jojo. Jojo. Karma's a bitch. Hey, it's me. <laughs> yes. I've definitely. arrived. Okay, so we're gonna make vision boards for sure. Yeah. Um love that. I'm manifesting a big ass motherfucking mansion with an all female production team and I want world tours, TV shows, movies. Hit records, Grammys, all of it. Mm -hmm. I want 10 hot boyfriends, 10 hot girlfriends. I'm not getting married. 
Oh, this is perfect. Yeah, sign and me up when you get this mansion because I'll be a part of it. I'll yes. be part of the crew. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I want my real estate agent is definitely going to be a woman. So mm. shout out to all my real estate agents out there. Period. I'm going to get the Cardsy B deck. Tell the people where they can find you. Okay. So if you want to follow my TikTok or Instagram, it's Mandy Rose Bish, M-A-N-D-Y-R-O-S-E-B-I-S-H. And if you go on there, I have some YouTube videos linked on there. My music videos, they're incredible. Go check them out. And um, I'm Mandy Rose on Spotify and Apple Music. So go stream my music. Show me some love. You guys are amazing. What do you want them to do on TikTok? Do you want them to make little dances to your song? Yes, like, please. I am I literally like and comment on everything that people tag me in if they're using one of my songs. So mm -hmm. go check out, go pick your favorite song of mine and make a little video to it. You can do a dance. You could do a makeup transition, whatever your little heart desires. You know, that's the other thing is um, we need to get the dance community introduced to your stuff because... Getting the choreographers putting your music in the dance studios is like a really big win. Mm. If you can get one or two or three choreographers really like starting to put your music in. Yeah. So like I think RHS was like the one song of oh, mine yeah. that I did see people making choreography to. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of it was like too intricate for it to be like a TikTok dance that anybody can do. Yeah. I would love to have more um, like dances on there that can be like interactive and, and yeah like the whole world can do it so that so that i can put more people on board hey. so like let's do it do you take dance class i haven't taken i took some classes at millennium since i've been out here like i've done some hip-hop classes i did some okay. heels classes oh yeah so i mean like i wouldn't call myself a professional but i know how to move <gasps> your girl can move okay perfect yeah and so. i do have a pole at my apartment too oh yeah yeah i liked it like i do i love all forms of dance so they can play your music at all the strip clubs Sign me up. Oh my God. And what does it say at the bottom? So RuPaul is my choice of cards and it is the eight of wands. Oh, wands. Eight of wands. Ru has the power to grant instant fame to her drag contestants. The eight of wands provides fast fortune, propelling events and progress forward at a rapid rate. It means fast luck and momentum, honey. Bitch, <laughs> wait. Yes. That's exactly what I needed to hear right now, girl, because, yeah, I'm ready for it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bring it to me. Oh, my God. What a good fortune. Shout out to RuPaul. We love you so much. Please have Mandy Rose on the show. Yes. RuPaul, I love you so much. I'm like, I'm not like the best makeup artist, but I will give you some slamming songs you could, on there. You could judge um, on <gasps> Drag Race. Oh, my God. I think I would just die like right there on the spot. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please, RuPaul. Yeah. Ru, Mandy Rose is going to make you a custom song for the show, and then you guys will have her on, and it'll be amazing. <laughs> love it. I love you. Okay, you guys, we love you so much. Please do something today that makes you happy and give yourself a hug and just, you know, love yourself. Because we love you. And thank you so much for being here, Mandy Rose. Yes, you guys deserve it. And thank you for watching. Thank you for having me, Rochelle. Of this course. was so much fun. Yes. Yeah. Love you. Mwah.